Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, we're looking at where to go for a world-class stuffing. How to get a bird in the hand worth the same as one in the bush. We've got gun dog training tips from Skinners. We've got hunting YouTube kit special and new stump is looking at this weekend's CLA Game Fair. First, bring out the big guns. We're crow shooting with Digweed and Crow. When the crows kept coming, Andy decided the best way to make a dent in the population was to release the digweed. George is often offered big days, but 99% of them don't materialise as big on the day. Andy is putting his reputation on the line here. Happily, Team Digweed plus Crow are already building a serious bag. It's going swimmingly. We've had a hell of a morning. Um, all these uh, crows and young jackdaws are coming to some wheat that's just on the turn. Um, and there's, because there's been a, you know, no, there was no wild food last year, and this year, up until now, everything's been backward. Um, so the corn's only just starting to turn, and where it's just going milky, uh, all of these are coming to some wheat, which is just the other side of the hedge. If you, ever, if you look through that gap there, you'll see them going to the wheat now. So we're shooting them on this bit of rape here that's, uh, that's out, out, you know, it's been sort of, it didn't really come in the winter. And uh, we're able to decoy them on here. Uh, and we've had a hell of a morning so far. I would have killed, uh, probably 2.20, 2.30 in just under two hours. So uh, it's gone pretty well. But I think there were so many here, I, you know, the crow man likes to do a job for himself, you know, with a few, but when it comes to a really big day, he has to call in the A team. And that's pretty much how the rest of the day carries on. See how I protected your decoys in? I did, I was impressed. I had to protect these crow decoys because apparently they don't work so well when they look like a tea bag. He did offer to put some carpet in here today, but I said as it wasn't red, I didn't fancy it. That's a one way ticket to uh, not a very good future. They're not liking it. I was hoping to get a few shots, but all the time this old boy's shooting, there ain't no point. He's just. As a legend, he's, he's had some real shots this morning. Some of these have been over under the car, some of these crows he shot. If he was missing, I'd be pushing him out of the way and showing him how to do it, but I don't need to yet. I'm hoping he's going to get tired later on and let me have a shot, but I don't think he will somehow. George may be accurate, but Andy is getting impatient. The eagle-eyed crowman spots opportunities for George to unleash the Parazzi and Game Ball combo. Cool. Don't worry about it, they'll come back. George. George. Hang on. He doesn't half get panicky for it. I thought he was a, you know. I am, but I want to make a big bait of that, George. So with birds coming from every direction and at different heights and speeds, how can George tell where he's hit them? Uh, when you hit something in the head, if it's flying, it'll always put its feet out. Uh, body shot, obviously you can tell, and the feather damage is quite a lot. Broken wing, they tend to come down spiralling with their head up, may even call. Um, but a, head, a definite head shot is both feet out. And the other one is lung shot, which you have, have quite a few lung shots, which are right in the centre of the pattern. And the, and the body will penetrate the lungs and the heart and it will fly on for a little bit and then collapse stone dead. But when it flies on, it's only flying on dead. But you can tell that and you should always mark those to pick them up. That's exactly the one. That one there, look. Exactly what we're talking about. Now you would call that towering. George has had an incredible year, and we're filming this just before he heads off to Madrid to try and claim his 21st world title. So how many competitions has he entered this year? Started the year in South Africa. I won the African uh, English Sporting Championships. The African Five Stand Championships. The South African FITAS Championships. The African Compact, one on the right. 
And that one, the African Fitter Sporting. Uh, I went to France. I was third in the French Grand Prix. I hope you got that in. Two with one barrel. Uh, then we had the Essex Masters, uh, which I won. I've won uh, in Romania. Oh! I won the uh, French Grand Prix for Compact. Oh, I second. I like it. I won the European Championships uh, in Fitter Sporting and the European Cup. The European Compact Championships in Italy last weekend and won the European Championships, regained the European Championships there. With a score of 198, shooting the last 150 straight and won the European Cup there as well. So, all in all, I've had um, what I think is a pretty good year. What do you say now? Perfect. Which is why George hasn't really been out pest controlling much in 2013. I haven't shot anything at all apart from uh, a few foxes and a few rabbits for weeks and weeks and weeks. And uh, when Andy suggested this, it appealed to me greatly. You know, for us to kill 300 in the morning and we've got three or four hours to go this afternoon. Uh, if you kill four or 500 in an area like this, you're going to do some real good. The birds keep falling and Crowman is under fire too for shooting birds too close to the hide. I've seen you come out of the hide after he's had a day's pigeon shooting and you look as though you've been out, just walked out of a turkey plucking shed. That old lens has never worked so hard this afternoon, has it? Normally they're all in here, like dustbin lids. How you can get them that close, you can film the feathers coming out of them, God only knows. We all know Andy is no stranger to a high bird. His raised eyes are getting higher by the minute too. Then sporting shooter editor Dom Holtam arrives, which doesn't help matters for Crow. Your father's brought his gun. The hide is getting pretty full now, so Crow sorts out a grain pickup and Dom asks George about his cartridges. The black gold that I'm shooting today, these are in a plastic wad uh, uh, five. It's the new design of the case um, and the box and everything else, and they're a, they're a really good, competitive, fast cartridge. There, yeah, there's a diamond shot. It's identical to a cricket ball scenario. So, so you've got a, a polished... Polished side, one side, that goes through the air fast. That's why a, a new ball, a heavy new ball, comes onto the back quicker. Yeah. On the shot you're looking at, as you're looking at it to... Um, the right hand side, uh, that is standard lead shot, and on the left hand side is diamond shot. George has had an exceptional day and is happy for Andy and Dom to have a shot with the Parazzi. The trouble is George's unconventional coaching technique is not helping Andy. Come on, anyone, anyone you like, put the easiest one. Oh, he's missed that one. Oh, he's just managed to wing one with a second oh, shot. <laughs> I've had a lot of fun. We've had some good banter in the hide as well. Um, and uh, he's taught me how to shoot, which, is, which I'm very grateful for. Um, and luckily Dom turned up halfway through the afternoon and, and whereas Andy had sort of got me to the raw stage, Dom has managed to fine tune it. Um, so I feel going into the World Cup final next week as though, uh, you know, I certainly stand a chance of coming in the top 50. We call it a day and judging by the time it takes us to collect all the birds, we know it's going to be a big one. It is 585 birds. George's best day ever and he's grateful that Andy gave him that call. Oh, I'd just like to thank Andy very much for a fantastic day shooting. Uh, he's done a very good job here in uh, setting this up in this corner um, so that we can kill a few. And uh, I'd like to thank him very much. Sometimes everything just falls into place. The birds are there, and it just so happens that the best shot in the world is there too.
Great shooting there by George. We expect nothing less. And good field craft by Andy. And if you entered our Facebook competition to count up the number of crows, rooks and jackdaws they shot, the answer is 585. Well done, Jason Pegg from Nottinghamshire. A signed copy of George's DVD, Digging for Gold, going out to you. Now let's see what everybody else has been up to. It's Hello Charlie. Here's what the world's up to this week. Hello, Charlie. Callum and Jordan here from East Yorkshire. Just had a morning on the crows. Haven't had too bad of a day. Hello, Hello Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> it's Stu and Aaron. We're out in Peterstow. We just had a wander through one of the woods. And this is what we got. Hello, Charlie. Ryan coming at you from outside Las Vegas, Nevada. Playing with my air gun in the heat and the wind. But I got my shade, so I'm good. What more could I ask for, right? Send us your own Hello Charlie. Film yourself on your mobile phone. Just a sentence saying Hello Charlie, who you are and what you're up to. Then share it or email it via YouTube, Facebook, Dropbox or you send it, you name it, to charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Right, we interrupt David's intensive CLA training to bring you this. This is Field Sports Britain News. In a career spanning four decades, George Digweed has won his 21st World Championship. He dropped just three clays out of 150 over three days at Castillo de Robledo in Spain. There's surely never been a shot as good as George, which is why his sponsor Game Ball has started a campaign to get the man a knighthood. Visit the link on the screen and share or like the page. The BBC cameraman and wildlife presenter Fergus Beely has asked Field Sports Channel to take down a film we made with him about falconry. A number of viewers noticed that Field Sports Britain episode 21 had been switched from public to unlisted. Although happy with the film at the time, Fergus Beely says he's now receiving criticism for working with Field Sports Channel from groups including the RSPB. If you'd like to watch the film, please click on the link on the screen. The Australian state of New South Wales has abolished its Game Council. It says its position as regulator, promoter and operator of hunting activities is a conflict of interest. However, this is being read as a political punch at the Shooters and Fishers Party of New South Wales, which has been supporting some of Premier Barry O'Farrell's policies. Now it's war. Now there's plenty to see at this year's CLA Game Fair this weekend. Here's our quick preview. If you find yourself on Gunmakers Row, please stop at the Gunmakers Pub where you can enjoy some of our films on our big screen. If you're after some new clothing, have a look at the Robbins stand. It's Robbins' first year at the CLA Game Fair. For the past five years, it's made a range of clothing worn by professionals all over the EU, including the uniform of the Belgian Forestry Ranger Service. It's designed to reduce tick bites and has a patented treatment that lasts for more than 80 washes. Lightweight and designed for warm summertime use, you can meet the designer and see the full range for the first time in the UK on stand number E443B at the clay line end of Gunmakers Row. Another new clothing company with a stand at the CLA is Shooter King. This is another clothing company with a Belgian connection. It's based in the country and makes a range of good quality shooting clothing, especially designed for deer stalkers. You can visit it at stand E0491. And if you're a young shot, why not go and meet the people behind Schools Challenge? In the most recent episode of Schools Challenge TV, the kids had a go at all kinds of country sports and outdoor activities at the Oxford Gun Company Open Day. And there's an interview with Olympic double trap gold medalist Pete Wilson. Click on the screen for more. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David, and he will be easy to miss at the CLA Game Fair because he normally looks like an asylum seeker. Now, we're not really into our mounts in the UK, but if you want the best stuffing in the world, go to Jacob in Denmark. Pity the wall-eyed fox, the hump-necked wildebeest and the lopsided hare. They're stiffs and their proud owners were stiffed. As a result, taxidermy is an underrated art form. There aren't many deer stalkers out there who haven't shelled out for a shoulder mount, only to be stitched up in one way or another by someone who either lacks talent or scruples, leaving you wondering if that really is your roebuck. 
Max Hunt gets his man stunned by Jakob Strunger, a Danish taxidermist with a client list that is most definitely out of bounds. This is actually the latest work uh, Jakob did for me. It's uh, the, one of the sheep I shot in New Zealand when I was down testing the new Zawa 101. And if you take a close look at the eyes, that's actually where you see the big difference in the work of taxidermist work. It's not like the shape of the, the form and everything, but the details like the nose and the eyes and everything that makes the big difference. But actually, I think the biggest work Jakob has ever done for me is the turning stack. Uh, some of them have already seen it in the video we did from the EVA. This stack is made totally uh, on, on, from nothing. Jakob did the shape because you can't order a, form, a, a foam form like that. So he built it up from scratch and did everything on his own. Jakob is the real deal. His apprenticeship lasted years and he travelled the world being taught by the best. For him, it's all in the detail and adding a little bit of flair. It's of course a thing about passion and creativity. Uh, design uh, and then skills uh, on doing something very different from from what we all see on if you have something standing on all fours and standard mannequins and, and things like that everybody can do that uh, but we try to change and make everything unique you're a hunter as well i have been hunting with you in kyrgyzstan and we had a lot, lot of nice things out there what's your dream hunt where, where, where are you dreaming about going um, my dream hunt would be Central Africa right now um, for, for some of the giant antelopes there and that would, that would be really big dream. We ask Jakob to show us what goes into transforming a boar skin into a lifelong hunting memory. What's the difference between a good mount and an average mount? For me, it's very important to use an eye that is realistic. Uh, and to save 15 euro, it's not worth it because it, you you can't you can't compare good eyes and, and cheap ones. Jakob is a talented man, but the more the hunter thinks about skin preparation, the easier it is for him. And if you're Somewhere in the mountains in Kagishia or uh, somewhere else in the world, it's a good idea before you go to consult with your taxidermist to know uh, how do you skin, what are the basics in skinning and salting and, and taking care of your field preparation of your skin. Max's red deer from New Zealand was a first for Jakob. It involved taking a standard mount and slicing and dicing it to give it a sense of movement. The stack we, we did for you was uh, basically built on a, on a standard mannequin standing on all four, uh, which we uh, chopped up in, I think, 30, 35 pieces. And then we added the, the different twist that I have not seen before anywhere is the turning of the, the whole mount. Uh, and I think that that put even more motion into the motion of running, you know, even though it's just circling around, then it, it adds something to the mount, I think. For more from Jakob, visit trophyart.dk. And if you want a trophy that is a talking point for all the right reasons, talk to your taxidermist and ask him not to save money on the eyes. Taxidermy, when it's good, it's really good. When it's bad, it's awful. Now you don't get trophies without guns. Let's have a look at a few on Kit Special. Kit Special this week looks at the most expensive shotguns on the gunsdirect.co.uk website, ranging in price up to £4,000. Everyone is in danger of loosening their wallet at game fair time. If you have £1,350 burning a hole in your pocket, then you might consider this Caesar Guarini 28 gauge multi choke. Some call Guarini's glorified fab arms at a premium price. Others point to how a company that was born on the same turf as Beretta is coming up fast on the rails behind the Italian 
gum giant. For about the same price, you can buy a Beretta Silver Pigeon 1 Sporter. Not to be confused with the Japanese moped of the same name, the Silver Pigeon is a staple of the UK market, among many others, that now comes in numbers 1 to 5, a C, an S, a Gold Pigeon, and even a Diamond Pigeon. £1,850 secures a Silver Pigeon 3 game with fixed chokes, improved cylinder, and quarter and 28-inch barrels. It's quite a leap to the next most expensive guns on Guns Direct. They are both Browning B25s, priced at £3,400 for a B2, and £4,000 for a B4 Sporter. Browning's classic top-end shotgun from its custom shop at Liège, the B25 or Superposed, was the last gun to be designed by John Moses Browning, who was still working on it when he died in 1926. That is it. Feast your eyes, fish into your pockets. Thanks for watching. This is Kit Special. From guns to dogs, it is our expert gun dog training tips from Skinner's. The birds are raining down. It's a red letter shoot day. Now your dog has to remember where one of them has landed so that after the drive, he or she can go and fetch it. How do you teach that? A young dog, when he's sat in the shooting field, may see multiple birds shot and he's got to mark them, store them in his brain. OK, I saw a bird shot over by that tree. Oh, I've seen one shot over by the pond and I've seen one shot over there. If he can remember them, uh, it's easier for him to go out later and find them, particularly when he's a peg dog and he's sat waiting, maybe for half an hour before he does it. What we're doing is we're developing his memory. Some dogs have brilliant memories, some dogs are like young men, useless memories, hopeless memories. As soon as they turn around and look away, they've forgotten. So you develop the dog's memory by putting something down, you turn, you walk him away 10 yards, turn around and send him straight back. You'll see if you've got a problem, because if you send him straight back and he goes, oh, 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 I don't know where it is, you need to work really hard with him. Some dogs you can walk, so a well-trained dog, he'll store in his memory for several days. There was a bird shot by that tree and I know it's there. So it's a gradual build-up. We build the distances, build the duration. So it's distance and time that the dog has to remember. Now, you're, you are presumably quite a long way down your training regime by this stage. You're, you're, you're past all the basic stuff, is that right? No, that's not quite true because all of these things are going on alongside each other. So we're developing a memory retriever on, in a six-month-old dog. We're developing his game-carrying ability. Do you see what I mean? It's all being done, all of, almost all areas, including jumping, you know, pop, 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 are being covered at six months. But by the time we're doing them with a 12-month-old dog, everything's bigger, longer, faster. Howard Kirby runs Mullinscott Gun Dogs from Lane's Shooting School near Andover in Hampshire. Visit mullinscott.co.uk. This series on gun dog training tips is brought to you by Skinner's Pet Foods, maker of the field and trial range of gun dog feeds. Visit skinnerspetfoods.co.uk. We have got a whole series of training tips with Skinner's. If you would like to, you can click on the screen above me in the sky there and watch them. Now let's look at what the whole world's been up to, hunting, shooting and fishing on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. Bunny Hunter is the hunting, shooting, fishing, serious chaps channel's worst nightmare. A capable hunter who tells a good story in a bra, pants and only a little imagination. Country girl hog hunting with Bunny Hunter has her in the woods after feral boar with an AR-15 and a handgun. It will be popular. Another channel that sensibly chooses to be the first to tread a well-worn path in video is FP Setback, which is devoted to the overlap between GCSE chemistry and going out shooting. So its latest video is called How to Burn Palladium, which follows a film called Outback Pig Shooting. I have chosen hunting with air gun pellets from a centerfire, which shows a pest bird hunt with a 2506 firing .25 caliber air gun pellets. Mr. Dave Ratz is building up a nice following. In this film, air gun hunting rabbits plus extras, he is doing exactly that, out for a walkabout on a sunny afternoon looking for rabbits. Time for English speakers to learn a bit about carp fishing Benelux style. It is from Belgian-based tackle company Corda, but it is useful nonetheless as two unpronounceable anglers discuss rigs and setups for long-distance casting and fishing, and they do it in English. Now, here's a silly clip from the International Game Fish Association YouTube channel. IGFA trustee Stuart Campbell hooks a large blue marlin off the island of Madeira, and, well, this is what happens next. Get ducks! Motto, it's duck season somewhere, brings out Argentina duck hunt, Muchas Patos Argentina, ep 10,351. Don't be put off by the episode number. 
number. Terry Denman of Mojo TV and Ramsey Russell from GetDucks.com share a great time in the blind picking off teal and rosy bills. Shas Pesh 66 shows a Roebuck stalk from start to finish. There's not much audio to go on apart from grunts and groans, which is lucky because it's in French. You will be glad to hear that nobody's head explodes despite Huck758 giving his video the desperate title Peed Off Hog's Head Explodes with a Bullet to Its Brain. Wild Hog Hunting Uncut Version. But it is a good film showing dogs bringing a pig to bay and then the hunter waiting for the safe moment to shoot it. You can click on any of these films to watch them. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, we are back next week when we will be bringing you all the action from the CLA Game Fair, which we're going to this weekend at Ragley Hall in Warwickshire. And we'll have our big screen there playing our films at the Gunmakers Pub on Gunmakers Row. Please drop by and have a watch. Also this week, we'll be handing out 30 of these Fox calls from Steve Larson in Australia. Thank you, Steve. And thank you to everybody who entered that draw. The emails will be going out shortly. Well, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't hesitate to subscribe. The subscribe button is, as ever, somewhere around the outside of the screen. Or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. Or best of all, scroll down to the bottom of the page, pop your email address into our constant contact box, and we will email you about our programme that's out every week, 7pm UK time on Wednesdays. This has been Field Sports Britain.